great, 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 great. I hope you are ready for a fun-filled day at Universal Studios. It's 8 a.m. We're gonna catch some early park hours and have a fun-filled day. Let's do it. One thing I like this morning at Universal Studios, the cars are still social distancing. You can see, keeping six feet between those cars. That's nice. And I'm here with Michael. Hey. You excited to be back, Mike? You know it. Let's do it. And introduce you to some crepes. Ho ho! So I heard that these crepes are amazingly fantastic. From Michael, the, the Disney guy. He said crepes at Universal were how good, Mike? On the same level or slightly above the Ronto wrap. Did you hear better than Ronto wrap? Because that's what I, I, heard. I heard slightly, slightly. I heard better. From him, that means it's probably better, but it's not a Disney, so. So let's find out if these crepes are truly better than the Ronto wrap. If they blow the Ronto wrap out of the water, but they don't have Mickey Mouse ears on them, so. That takes away. So the line for security is quite long. We're making our way all the way back here to a parking lot and making a U-turn. Let's do it. So the lines at security were a bit long, but now we're making our way into the park. Got our temperatures checked. And here we are, plenty of space here on our treadmill, I mean walkway. Welcome back to the Universal Orlando and Jurassic Park. And we are back, welcome back to Universal Studios. You can see that street view from here, looking into the park, so much to do and see. We'll see how much we do and see here today, but I gotta try those crepes, I heard they were so good. Passing by the Born Stuntacular. One of these days I want to check that out. Next show at 10.15 though. So that's uh, that's a wait. And I just am now noticing these stars. The Walk of Fame here in front of this part of the road. That makes a lot of sense. I like the theming here. We've got the Scooby Gang over here. You can see the Scooby Gang walking around with their masks on. Really cool to see. And waving to us through this kind of bridge here. Crossing. And it looks like we can't pass for now. But nice to see those characters over there. Hey! So I forgot the early park hour at Universal meant pretty much only the Harry Potter ride or those big rides are open. So maybe it'll be the mummy and Harry Potter, I'm not sure. We'll walk by that way and check, but can't go that way yet until 9 a.m., the official park opening. So in the meantime, let's go check something else out. It feels strange to be back at Universal Studios without all those kiosks that we had before for the Mardi Gras food festival, if you recall that. A bunch of food kiosks around here. Didn't get to use all my points, but we'll come back next year. But again, it's just so open here without those kiosks. So walking by the mummy here, it looks like the mummy might actually be closed. So they usually open these two, but maybe with things going on right now, they're only opening the one, meaning just Harry Potter. So we can come back for this maybe later, or maybe not, we'll see. It is a nice sunny day out here at Universal. We've got to appreciate that sun shining through as we make our way towards Harry Potter world, maybe Gringotts before that food opens up. Gotta try that crepe though. Welcome back to Diagon Alley. You can see Ringotts up ahead. And I'm still appreciating these slanted streets, you know, it's been such a long time. You can see kind of this effect going on here with the buildings being built kind of diagonally. Arriving at the bank, Ringotts Bank. Again, look at the slant of the upper sections of the building and the dragon on top. It looks much bigger in person. I like it. So it is a 45 minute wait here at Gringotts. We've been on shorter days, so maybe another day. But again, nice to appreciate the ambiance here. A relaxation factor in Diagon Alley. And there's so many shops we haven't seen in the past either. Taking a look in the ice cream shop, maybe we can find that butterbeer ice cream we've read about. I'm not sure if this is the one, but it might be. Taking a closer look at the menu here, they do have that butterbeer ice cream right there in the middle as the big festivity, in addition to some other hard pack ice cream. Really cool flavors on there. Let's see how this one is. So we're finding out this shop doesn't do butterbeer ice cream in a cup, they only do it in the cones. So maybe we're going over to the hopping pot and getting it over there where they do have cups. We'll see. So this part of Gringotts looks totally different than I remember. I think we've been back here maybe with Michelle, but uh, it looks totally different, I guess, in the daytime. That being said, still no luck finding the hopping pot, but I really do love the design of these shops here in Gringotts. 
Here it is, the hopping pot behind all these stores in this kind of back alley in Gringotts. So Hopping Pot is more of a drink location. They only have the one flavor of ice cream, but they do have cups, so. This is the Butterbeer ice cream. Really interestingly stylized there. It almost looks like a vanilla with like the Butterbeer stripes in it. But we'll see how it tastes. It's got our extra cup to split it up. Let's do it. So tried the Butterbeer ice cream and it is nice. I like the Butterbeer flavor, but I feel like they probably could have added in more kind of Butterbeer flavoring. It does seem like a vanilla ice cream kind of glazed almost with butterbeer, whereas kind of the caramely looking pieces are the butterbeer and the rest is kind of vanilla. Whereas I'd like to see the entire ice cream just be pure butterbeer. A stronger butterbeer kick would kind of sell this one over the top for me, but it's not bad. Overall, I want to give this one, I uh, will give it a seven, seven out of 10. Not bad, might get it again, but more likely to try something new. Like the other ice cream flavors at that other shop. I don't know if I've ever seen this exit to Diagon Alley, it looks like the Ambus station wagon something. Not so sure, but maybe it's also an entrance. But it looks like it kind of converts into the bookstore area here, bookshelves, and a staff only door back here. And we're back outside, heading towards the Simpsons and Men in Black. So there you go, hidden entrance or exit here. I didn't even know of here. So as opposed to catching any rides, we're taking a leisurely stroll down the world of the Simpsons. Love these views, this restaurant. I don't remember Chief Wiggum here, but here he is in front of the car. So Central Park Crepes is the crepe spot that we've got to try, that Mike's tried and he said is amazingly good. Fantastic. But it looks like they're currently still closed. They do have those lines, but nobody lined up yet. A variety of sweet ones, some savory ones. Maybe we're doing the, what is it? The smoked brisket and the lemon blueberry. We'll see. They come back around. It does sound pretty promising, so. That's where we're at for now, but don't know when it opens. Now making our way over to Islands of Adventure. Mike managed to get us a virtual queue for Hagrid starting as soon as 15 minutes from now. We're gonna make our way over there and enjoy one of our favorites at Universal, that Hagrid's motorbike adventure. And it sounds like Forbidden Journey is only a 10 minute wait as well. So I'm not sure, maybe just Gringotts was the crowded one and everything else will be less crowded. Or maybe now crowds have diversified in the morning. Either way, I'm excited for it. Let's check it out. Now making our way onto the train here at the train station at Gringotts, making our way over to Islands of Adventure. Only a 15 minute wait, which is nice. So we're gonna catch those Hagrid rides on time, nicely on time, and nice to see that things are moving quickly here. There are lines, not only kind of down in that boarding area, but also up here on the stairs as we make our way onto the uh, train to make our way to, I don't even know, Hogsmeade? Help me out here. Line. Mike is off. Going into the world of Harry Potter. I don't see him though. Oh, there he is. Bye. Uh, I like it. Now waiting for our train to arrive at the station. Here's what the lines look like. Again, not too bad. Not too long. We should be on our way and catch Hagrid's in no time. And the train is off. Leaving the station now, making our way to Hagrid's. I think of the two parks, I do prefer Islands of Adventure. So maybe we'll do a few rides here before we head back for those crates. So here we are doing two Universal Parks in one day. It's a full Universal filled adventure. I figure we'll probably change it up later in the day, but here in the morning, two parks, one day. I like it. Seeing plenty of lines out here, but not too sure which one's going where. We'll figure out here in a bit which one is for Hagrid's, but it's, it's, it's got people. So today's line for Hagrid's loops back behind this building here by Poseidon's journey, I guess. So making our way. We have a virtual pass, but I guess everyone here does. So that's what's up. So we asked a team member and he mentioned he thinks it's probably under an hour in this line. So we'll see you in probably under one hour. So it seems like this is the scan point where we'll scan our ticket to prove that we have a virtual ticket and then make our way onto the ride. It's only been about 10 minutes in this line, so that's nice. Now moving through the queue, and I'm gonna love all the greenery and nature feel around here. I'm not sure if some of this decor is new, like those arrows leading us through the queue, but I like it. It does feel unusually green and bright here. Maybe because it's been so long since we've been in the queue. So nice to be back at it, excited to ride Hagrid's. And once you get into the queue, it moves quite fast. So you don't have to worry about standing in this area too long. And that's probably because we have those virtual tickets. 
So the virtual tickets do help in that sense. Just got off Hagrid's, it was about a 30 minute wait. So faster than we thought with that hour, but it was a great one. Glad we had a chance to check it out here today. And now Forbidden Journey. Just got off Forbidden Journey, it was only a 30 minute wait, not 45, so faster than expected yeah. again. Now making our way to crepes. Make our way back over for some crepe time. Let's see how good these really are. So 60 minute wait here at Hogsmeade to London King's Cross. Not gonna wait for that one, unfortunately. So we're gonna walk it. We're gonna walk it. Let's go. Just as we're walking out of Harry Potter here towards Forbidden Journey, we've got our friends from Madagascar. Look at this Madagascar dance party over here. Love it. All right. Hey. Nice to see that Madagascar dance party before Mythos towards Harry Potter as we make our way. We got the trolley passing overhead here in Seuss land as we make our way towards the exit. So we'll get to see every section of the park here, which is always nice. I love that overhead Seuss trolleys. Those are a lot of fun. In case you were curious, 45 minutes for the Seuss trolley that we saw passing overhead. So we got some water and the rain is coming down really heavily now as we make our way over to the other park. So we'll try to stay dry, but see how it goes. So if you're looking to get an idea of how rainy it is out there, Mike, how, how rainy is it out there? It's pretty rainy. You know, you have the, the option, you have to read this thing, the option to stay out of it, but uh, we're in it right now. Okay. Who knows? We might wait it out a little bit more. I got the rain jacket, fortunately. I think we got to get Mike one of these. I have an umbrella that I left in the car. Now back in Universal Studios, Florida, and the rain has stopped or lightened up at least quite a bit. We'll see if it comes back later, but drying off, making our way to some grapes. Here is the new pass holder magnet and button. I'm glad we're getting them. We may have missed some in the past, but at least we made it out for this one as we make our way to that food. Now in line for the crepes. It's a sort of long line. Mike said this might be 30 minutes, but he's not concerned. Mike, 30 minutes and you're not concerned. No problem. No, it can be 45. I'm standing in this line. That is how it's life-changing crepe. Life-changing crepe. Let's give these a shot. If Mike's saying it, the Disney guy at Universal. We gotta try them. Just placed our order for two briskets and two lemon blueberry. And we're standing here at this desk waiting as they prepare the last group's order. And then we'll walk over to that desk over there on that side and we'll watch as they make our crepes. So really excited to see that process. Here is that menu yet again. But again, we're going for the smoked brisket and we're going for the lemon blueberry. Both of us, same thing. Let's see how they come out. I'm excited. Watching the crepe making process. Look at that, it looks awesome. She poured the batter on there. Now we're spinning around that batter to make the delicious crepes. Love it. And they gotta cook for a while, stuff them with good stuff. And yeah, I don't know, however you make crepes. That's, that's what we're doing. Flipping those crepes over and you can see what it looks like on the other side here on this one. Still waiting to flip the other one. Oh yeah, crepe making process. Let it cook and there it is. All right. Tossing the cheese on there. That cheese is gonna start to cook on the tray with the crepes. And there you go, the meat going on. Love it, looks fantastic. So we're getting to see what that process looks like for the barbecue brisket, beef, whatever it was. Looks good. A little bit of coleslaw in there and some sauce, sauce like a boss. And we are on our way with some crepes. All right. And here are those perfectly packaged smoked brisket crepes. Kind of fold them up in half and then fold them into little triangles, put them in these little holsters. We're gonna grab the paper part and take them on the go. So excited for those, but we got one more round coming, the dessert one. So here we are seated across from Central Park crepes with our lemon blueberry and our smoked brisket crepes. Looks amazing, looks fantastic. Let us try and let you know. Wow, what a flavor here on this smoked brisket crepe. Amazing, really fantastic. And I feel like a lot of the food that I've had at Universal can be okay, can be good. I really like that Harry Potter food the most. I feel like you've got a new reigning champ here at Universal. Amazing flavors. I love that barbecue ranch sauce in there. You go down a few layers, you get more of that meat going on. Probably a little bit more barbecue ranch drizzled into the core section of the meaty section would be really nice, but really amazing kind of a smoky flavor there. The coleslaw really does add in the middle there. I feel like the combination of those flavors is fantastic. It is quite meaty and packed in the middle of the crepe, I'd say got that barbecue ranch kind of initially on the outskirts not a lot of meat kind of at the beginning which is a fantastic flavor too but there's a lot of kind of smoked brisket in there as you make your way deeper into the crepe and the whole flavor is fantastic 
Overall, I feel like this one's probably a nine out of 10. Definitely worth the wait, amazing flavors. Great call, Mike. Thank you, thank you. Was it as good for you as it was last time? Absolutely, a tiny bit less on the uh, the ranch. Tiny bit less, but still amazing. So absolutely worth going out of your way for. Yeah, that is one change I could see, is them going a little bit heavier on the ranch next time, that barbecue ranch. Really amazing, fantastic flavors. So excited to dig into that lemon one. So the question you may be asking yourself, Dave, is it, is it really better than the Ronto Wrap at Walt Disney World Hollywood Studios? They're so different, the flavors are so different, but it definitely has the potential to be competitive with that one. So I can see how it could be better than the Ronto Wrap. Flavor-wise, I really do love that barbecue ranch. I'm telling you, that part is so worth it. It's competitive. In short, just very competitive. Making me so excited to try that lemon blueberry one too. Okay, the time has come to try the lemon blueberry. We'll let you know what we think. Just finished the lemon blueberry crepe and now I'm quite full. The lemon blueberry crepe was good. It had some great flavoring to it, but comparatively to that smoked brisket, it wasn't quite at that level. Between the two, I feel like that's a plentiful amount of food. It'd be nice to be able to split them, but I can see how they're probably hard to split too. I liked the lemon blueberry crepe, but it wasn't as good as the smoked brisket. I feel like the lemon shavings or the lemon curd or whatever lemon flavoring was on top was quite good at the very beginning of the crepe. I also really liked the bottom of the lemon crepe with the lemon pound cake in there. Delicious lemon pound cake flavor. Both of those strong lemony flavors. Otherwise, I'd say it wasn't quite as strong and consistently delicious and flavorful as the smoked brisket. So could I see myself possibly getting this one again? Possibly, possibly I could. That being said, I'd love to try some more desserts at Universal in the future too. So I wanna give this dessert maybe a seven out of 10 here at Universal. I can be a little bit more stringent on my dessert reviews. So the smoked brisket, I would definitely wait in line for again. The lemon blueberry, I might get again, but I might try something new. Still not bad though, I'm really glad we had a chance to try it. And the lemon was the strong flavor, not too much blueberry flavor at all. There were some actual blueberries in it though. As we're making our way outward, you can see SpongeBob, Squidward, and Patrick dancing over there on our left. Nice to see them partying out here. Here on our right, the Scooby Gang, and of course the Mystery Machine is there too. Only makes sense, right? So get your socially distanced pictures there. And here's the Simpsons bus on our left. You've got Bart in there for some pictures too. I like that Bart has the bar over there. It looks like he can maybe hold on to that bar while they're taking a ride. He's in the vehicle when they're driving, I'm not sure. And that concludes our day at Universal Studios. Overall, yes, Central Park Crepes is some of the best food here at Universal Studios and competitive with the Ronto Wrap. I can definitely see myself going back for that smoked brisket crepe. Thanks so much for being a part of the fun with me today. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay informed of those future adventures. Until next time, play on. So we're finding out this shop only leaving the station now, making our way to Hagrid. So here we are doing two Universal Parks in one day. Just got off Forbidden Journey. It was only about a 30... Thank you very much. Bye. Just placed our order for... We're good, thanks. Wow, what <clears throat> new reigning champ here at Universal. I feel like the lemon shavings or whatever lemon... What was it called? Uh, Main Street Crepes? Central Park. Thank you. I can definitely see myself going back. And Forbidden Journey sounds like that's 10 minutes too. So maybe, fortunately, when everything opened up, the lines died down, or maybe Gringotts is still busy, but everything else is less quiet, I'm not sure. But we'll see. And it sounds like 